Hi, I'm Jonathan with the Michigan Depression Glass Society. It's April 6, 2020, and normally we'd be having our Monday meetings at this time, but because of the corona epidemic and everything else going on in the world, we're not having it. But I still wanted to kind of post something for everyone to enjoy and have a table setting. So that's what I've done here. And this is my kind of springtime Easter theme here. I'm using the Pastel Banded uh, Cream X, which was manufactured by the Macbeth Evans Division of Corning Glass Works in the late 30s to early 40s. And then what I've done from there is really accent it with a lot of other glass. So unlike a normal table setting that we do at the club where we're normally focused on the history of the glass and all the different pieces of it and everything, I'm using this opportunity to focus more on how I designed and built my table here. So I actually did this place setting at the club about 10 years ago and at the time I just had the basic place setting pieces on the table. I had one cake stand with a few flowers in the middle. Very simple and basic. And one of the things I found about my table designs over the years is they've gone increasingly complex. Not to say that there's anything wrong with doing like a simple table, but every now and then it's really fun to kind of go to the maximum. And I really considered this, this to be, I crammed as much as I could on the table. It looks like it's ready for a photo shoot for Martha Stewart Living or something like that. So I'm just gonna walk you through kind of how I did this. So the first thing that I did is I put the cake stands on the center of the table. So um, these buttercream colored ones are actually made by Mosser Glass. They're a little bit newer. Um, this one here, I initially had a pink Fenton cake stand there and it was a little bit too wide. So I put this Jeanette Harp one there. And then over on the other end here, I have a Jade cake stand, which was Martha by Mail in the late 90s. And I believe Monster Glass produced that one as well. So I started by putting those cake stands in the center of the table and I actually used a measuring tape to make sure they were perfectly centered. And then from there, I stacked some of the bunnies and other little things on it. And you know, that would have been good enough right there, but I really decided I wanted to maximize and put all my Easter stuff out. So I have all these little different covered hens and chicks and bunnies and things like that. And I really wanted to fill in all the gaps. You can see I did that here on the cake stand between the two layers here. I have some little glass bunnies, um, which are predominantly, well, we have a Fenton one here. The Jadeite one is a new one from Mosser. Um, this is actually a vintage one that's actually a candy jar. So it's hollow on the bottom. This would have been filled in with jelly beans or something like that. Had a little metal cap on here um, for Easter time. And then, um, you know, basically what I did is I kept going back and adding more and more. So I put the cake stand down here, I added the bunny on top, it looked great, but I'm like, and eh, what can I do to fill it in? So first I put a doily underneath and I just decided I didn't like the frilliness of it. So I have all these fake eggs, so I kind of scattered those around. And you can see I did that on the top cake stand here. And then as far as the rest kind of surrounding areas of the cake stands, I really just went in and filled it in with all the little nooks and crannies with all the other glass I have. So, um, and you know, trying to continue to add level and dimension and things like that. So you can see I got, um, you know, some little cute, uh, these are actually plastic cake stands from Target to just kind of add some little height to different things. Um, and then, you know, just kind of filled in all the spaces here. I have some garland eggs from Michael's and things like that. So if you come around to this side of the table here, you can actually kind of get a glimpse of all the other elements I've incorporated here. So I have little, um, some things that aren't glass, so this little uh, kind of vignette here. Um, and, you know, again, just some little other non-glass non elements here, little figurines, little, got a little cute Fenton bunny here and things like that. So, um, so that's kind of what I did here. And I would really encourage everyone to just really play with their glass. Um, this table setting evolved over the course of a couple days, so I just kept tweaking it and remembering things I had in other cabinets and adding to it all the time. So um, you don't have to do an elaborate table setting like this, but it's fun to kind of pull out all the stops every now and then. Um, I know it's a really kind of challenging and stressful time right now, and I would encourage everyone, even if you're not going to go and set an elaborate table like this, make sure you use your glass. That's really what it was designed for, especially in the Great Depression, people pulled out this colorful glassware and it really kind of lifted their spirits in these otherwise kind of dark and dismal times, which is similar to what we're facing today. So, um, you know, take some time, have a nice casual breakfast on a Saturday or, um, you know, pull out some jadeite for a weeknight meal and just really enjoy and use your glass. So again, thank you for watching this and kind of seeing how I designed the table. We hope we'll be back soon to our monthly meetings, but in the meantime, stay safe and hope to see you soon.